So today I'm going to show you how to make a histogram uh, on the calculator using the same data that I used in the post where I showed you how to do it by hand. If you don't have that data, I'm going to include it right under the video so you can just scroll down and see it. Um, now I have a TI-84 here and this will actually work for a TI-83 as well. The screens are exactly the same. So the first step that you need to do is you need to actually enter the data in the calculator. And the way that I do that is I press the stat button and then I go to number one edit. So I want number one edit. This brings up a list which is uh, very similar to like a, a sheet like in Excel. Um, everything should go into L1. It makes everything a lot easier that way. You could put it in a different list, but everything really should go in L1 just so we don't have to change screens. So first number is 12. I type 12. I press enter. Now this will get boring real quick because I literally just type the numbers and press enter. You may notice that on my list of data that it's in columns and you may think that means it should be in different columns on the calculator and that's not true at all. Actually I want everything in one single list. The biggest risk actually here is typos, right? Because you want every number to be correct. Even one single number off will really throw your graph off quite a bit. All right, now my original data set had 30 points in it. Notice how it says L1 of 31. That's that blank space, so the 65 is the 30th number, and if you look at that list of numbers, that is the last number. And one trick that I use, I'm not going to do it now because I already double-checked, but I can read backwards on my list. I'll make my eyes catch any errors because if you read backwards, then you have to think a little bit more and you have to pay a little more attention so your eyes will catch any problems. All I'm doing is pressing the up arrow on the calculator to do this. Right, once you have your data in here, you want to go into stat plot. Right above the y equals, you'll see in blue it says stat plot. So press second and y equals to go into stat plot. Your screen lo should look something like this. Now, if you've ever done any other statistical graphs, you may have other things going on here. Everything should be off right now. If it's not, go to number four and make sure it's off. Once you've done that, if needed, go to number one. We want plot one. Again, you can choose any plot you want. This just makes it the easiest on, so I pressed enter when I was highlighting on, come down here under type, highlight the histogram, see how that literally looks like a histogram? That's the histogram, so press enter. And notice how it says X list L1. So I'm going to leave that alone, that's why I put everything in L1, it makes life so much easier. If I, okay, so I guess it isn't too hard if I put all the data into L2 to change that, but you don't have to and that's nice. Frequency should be one, that's basically saying how many times to count the data, so leave that alone. Once you have all this set up, you'll get the best picture if you press zoom, so on the very top of your calculator, and you go down here to number 9. Now you can just press number 9, but I'm scrolling so you can see it. Come down here to number 9 and you want zoom stat. That way the calculator will zoom in a certain way based on the data. So I'm going to highlight 9 and press enter or type the number 9. This is a pretty decent histogram. Now notice no labeling of any kind. Um, we have to get, uh, we have to kind of pull the information out of here. If you look at the uh, picture on the previous post, which I'll link to, you can see that this looks just like the output that we got when, uh, when I ran it through the computer. Now, if I want to see what all these things are, like how tall is that bar, I have no idea. I press the trace button. Several things come out. This is the smallest value of the group. So this group goes from 12 to 20.833333. I'm going to change this. So this is telling me that my class width is 8.833333. I don't like that. I'm going to probably change that to something like 8 or 9. N is telling me the frequency in the class. So N equals 8. So that means there's 8 points between 12 and 20.8, not including 20.8. Remember, you don't include that last point. That's why it has a less than instead of an equals. The next group goes from 20.8 to 29.67 about. There's six points in there. Okay, I don't like this class width. Computers and calculators don't mind decimals, but if the whole point in statistics is to make a graph easy to read and easy to see patterns, we want to make it a little bit easier to deal with, easy to look at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into window, and I'm going to change this number right here, x scale. This actually represents your class width on the calculator. So see how it's 8.833333? I'm going to change this to 9. Just a nice whole number. There's no rules about this. That's what's different about statistics and other math. There's not really a rule. You just pick something that looks nice. You want to present the data in a nice way. Now when you do this, if you do zoom 9 again, it's going to reset. So now you click graph. Now my picture didn't change too much, but when I press trace now, 
Uh, much easier, right? We go from 12 to 21 and there's eight points. So this is telling me there's eight numbers between 12 and 21, not including 21. Move to the next one. So I click the arrow to the right. Between 21 and 30, there's six points, not including 30. 30 goes in the next group. Click to the right. Between 30 and 39, there's six points, not including 39. Continue the process. So you can see that you can let the calculator do all the work for counting up the points, and then you can basically draw this histogram from this picture. When you draw it, though, make sure you label around the bar. So this would be 12 over here, 21 over here, the next number, the next number, and then your frequency as well. So the calculator does the work, but you're going to have to end up doing the labeling and stuff. All these directions I just did, you can see below this video. So I typed everything out as well. So if something was unclear, you can go down, scroll down and see some uh, more explanation.